Hey, what's up, comic book culture? It's your boy C B M in the house and the place to be. When you rocking with me, you need one mic and one MC. Oh my gosh, I just came up with that off the top of the dome, and I am sorry for that silliness. I think I'm just way too excited because I just heard the announcement that CGC is now grading Marvel cards. And when I heard that, it took me straight back to the 1990s. I was like, what is going on? Like, I took a huge trip down memory lane. Nostalgia hit me full blast. I threw on some X-Men, the animated series, followed by Spider-Man, the animated series on the big screen. And I went upstairs and I went into my closet and I dug out all of my binders. I think I had four or five of them just just completely filled and jam-packed and crammed in with cards. I had doubles, triples, quadruples of some cards. And I'm pretty sure I had like complete runs of like Marvel Universe Series 1, 2, and 3. And I'm going to dust them off. I'm going to probably make another video later on in the future. I'm going to probably put them in some new like um, card sleeves. And... I'm really excited about this announcement, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people out there in the comic book community that are really excited about this, because comic culture loves these Marvel cards from the 1990s. I mean, I grew up on them. The excitement I had as a kid, going to the um, subway station, jumping on a train, traveling all the way to Manhattan... To go to one certain store that had all of the cards, you know, he had them packaged, he was selling them by the box, he sold them individually. I would make like a 40 minute train trip all the way to Manhattan just to go to this one in particular store. And the excitement that I would have, the rush that I would have that went through me as I was riding the train, you know, into Manhattan and walking to the comic book store and digging and hunting for these cards and buying a ton of packages and and, and then going back home and, and, and getting on the train home and just opening up all the packages and I, I can still remember the like the smell of like when you un unpackaged a, a a card set and just loving that feeling I, I remember being so happy like just opening up those packages in the train on the way home and and just love, I, I wish I would have kept more unopened packages, but I, I hate to say I, I think I only have like one or two unopened packages, and I wish I would have saved more of those because I have so many doubles and triples and quadruples of cards, and I really wish I would have just held on to some like, like an unopened complete set. And I have to say that the excitement is back for these cards, the love is back for these cards, and I'm completely excited. And I'm going to go out there. I'm going to try to get unopened boxes. I'm going to try to complete the rest of my um, collection. You know, I, I don't know whatever collection, whatever series needs some completing up there. But I'm going to try to complete every series possible. At least all the ones that I really, really like and love. Like Marvel Masterpiece and Marvel Metal. And just there were so many cards that were released in the 90s. I think each year there was like. A new series or a new set of cards that came out or and just loving and just loving like making the trip to Manhattan to go get these cards and and the hunts and like writing back home with like 20 packages of just cards and and me and my cousin just opening them looking for the few cards that we needed to complete the set and getting pissed off at all the doubles we were getting and just but the feeling was just such a great feeling and I'm, I'm glad that CGC made that announcement because it completely took me down memory lane. And I'm sure a lot of nostalgia is kicking in for a lot of people when it comes to these cards. And um, they were some be beauties. And I sure do miss them. I don't know if Marvel still puts out any cards. But I really miss them and I miss collecting them. And I think you're going to see a lot of people collecting these Marvel cards again and getting back into the hobby. And just... I'm sure there's a lot of people that missed it just as much as I did. So let's start. This right here is no complete. It's not a complete set of any in particular series 
or, or like or run. It was just like my favorite cards from each series. So a little bit of series one, two, and three is in here. There's a little bit of Marvel Metal. There's a little bit of Marvel Masterpiece. But um, it was just my favorite cards, my favorite superheroes from each run, from each series. So let's you know get into this. As you can see, my cards were really they they were really kept in good condition, really pres preserved really well, and um, I think they were in excellent shape. And I can't wait to get some of these cards graded because I think they're gonna grade really high. As you can see on all of these cards. The border, the frame is really, really nice and white and sharp. All of the corners look really sharp to me. And most importantly, all of the color on the cards are really popping and, and vibrant. And they just look in excellent condition. And um, I normally change out these plastic card sleeves like every year or two. I want to say every two years I'll change out the sleeves. But um, here's Marvel Universe Series 1. And again, these are all my favorite superheroes. You know, the characters that I'm the most fond of and in love with. And here's my main man, the Silver Surfer. And um, anyone that was a Silver Surfer related character, like, you know, anyone in the Defenders or any of the Cosmic Beings, I would collect. Here's Thor. He's definitely in my top 10 of favorite characters of all time. And um, in the back of these cards... Is like a little, little I guess like origin story, and a little like did you know fact about each character, and then also it gives like some, I guess like stats on the character on the superhero like their real name, their group affiliation, their height, their weight, their battles fought, their win loss ties, their win percentage, their arch enemies, their first appearance, and then like a little origin story, a little. Biography about them. I don't know if you can see. That's what the back of the cards look like. Pretty cool. Pretty nostalgic stuff. Like I said, these cards are pretty old. They're from the 1990s. And um, what I like is I don't see any kind of yellowing or discoloration on the white part of these cards on that border. The frame looks really nice and white and clean and crispy. The corners are looking crispy and sharp. Real sharp corners. Here's High Evolutionary. He's going to pop up in the MCU eventually. So is Galactus and Doctor Doom. And here's She-Hulk. I really love that show. I have to say that I, I thought at first, I, I didn't know what to think of it. I thought it was just going to bomb. But then I realized it was a really fun, funny show. And I really enjoy it. You know, it's nothing to be taken so seriously. Not every show, not every Marvel show has to be like, so serious. Some of them can be funny and have some fun with them. Uh, here's another one of my favorite cards, Thanos. I like it when they did things like this, like famous battles. So you have like the first time thing and Hulk like battled or the first time Silver Surfer fought Mephisto with Thanos. Or would show you like little cool battles that when I was a kid, I didn't even know about some of these battles, these famous battles. Like the first time the Korean Skull War happened or the first time Thor took on Loki, or even the f f origin story of the Silver Surfer and Galactus, and the first time they came to Earth and took on the Fantastic Four. I really didn't know about those stories, and so like, I picked up these cards, and I really did learn it from these cards, and that opened up like a whole new other addiction in comic books. I started wanting to get like origin stories i wanted to collect first appearances I, I wanted to like you know really get the first appearance of that super villain or you know i really it really got me into things like that you know when i was a kid without these cards you know especially before the internet at you know at the age of like seven eight i would have never had the chance to see the cover to fantastic four issue one or the first cover appearance of Thor in Journey into the Mystery. You know, I would have never seen those things or knew how, what those covers looked like. And it just sparked the imagination afterwards. I was like, what did the first cover to X-Men issue one look like? Or what did Avengers issue one look like? And it made me want to get those comics, you know, and hunt them down. And 
Here's a silver surfer sticker that I got out of like a vending machine. And one time I saw someone throw it up on eBay for like 90 bucks. I could believe it because you could probably search and hunt for this sticker for like a decade and never find it. And um, every once in a while I'll see like a really rare like silver surfer sticker pop up on eBay that I don't have. And I just hate the thought and the idea of paying like 50 to 90 bucks for a sticker just because it came out 10 or 20 years ago. I, I don't care how much, how long ago it came out or how much you think it's worth. At one point, you just got it out of a vending machine for a quarter, and now you want a Hondo for a bit. So I really hated that. I also like these cards. Um, It's got, like, Spider-Man interviewing, like, the Hulk or Doctor Doom or the Surfer. And it's, he pops, like, a little joke, you know, with Thor or something. And that's the end of... I guess those were just the, my Marvel Universe Series 1 cards. Those were my, my favorite ones out of the bunch. Some of them do have a little bit of yellowing. I'll probably replace them more with the cards I have upstairs that are in better condition. Here's Series 2. And I guess they must have been putting these cards out like year after year, like back to back, you know, because Series 1 was in 1990 and then... Series 2 right here came out in 1991, so they probably were putting them out like, you know, back-to-back -back years. And when Series 2 came out, I loved it just as much. I was blown away, and I, it really did, like, again, capture the imagination and just got me hooked. And I couldn't wait to see what was behind those cards and what, you know, story it was going to tell or, you know, what it was going to say about each character and again, this is just my favorite cards of series from series two, and my favorite superheroes from you know in the MCU. But his thing, I love the Fantastic Four, and anyone that has anything to do with it. Submariner, I became a fan of his when I started reading those old Silver Age Defender comic books. Adam Warlock, he's my second favorite superhero of all time, and um, it really blew my mind though when um I was collecting series two and. I saw like there were su new superheroes added into the series. Superheroes that were not in series one. And I believe Adam Warlock was one of them. And when I saw Adam Warlock, you know, in card form, I was just blown away. I couldn't even believe that he was added to the series. Because for a while, like, I felt like I was the only Adam Warlock fan. Like, the only person that was like, hey, Adam Warlock's my second favorite superhero of all time. And people would be like, Adam who? And it'd be like, Adam Warlock, he's really important to the Marvel Universe. And, you know, especially once like Infinity Gauntlet came out, that's when people started recognizing and realizing how important and how cool Adam Warlock was to the Marvel Universe. He needs more recognition, more a show, a movie, something, a comic book series. How about we start off with that? But um, when I saw Series 2, I was blown away. Like I said, it blew my mind. The, I love the artwork on Series 2 just as much as I love the classic artwork from Series 1. It's a great silver surfer just like taking on a whole fleet of spaceships, whole battalion of them. And what I like about these cards was it was the first time that they ever introduced these power ratings. So not only did it give you like a little origin story and a did you know fact and like you know some other information like their height and their weight but it gave you like this whole power rating it covered their strength their speed their agility their stamina their durability their intelligence and i was just like oh my god someone's actually going to give me some real stats some real facts on how strong and powerful each superhero is and now me and my friends get to compare our favorite superheroes to each other and see who's stronger and who's weaker and who's got a better winning percentage. And oh, these cards just opened up a whole new door of addiction for kids back in the 90s, in the early 90s. Kids were loving this stuff. Here's Quasar, some more Hulk and Galactus and Thanos. Nebula, this was like one of the first times I was exposed to this character in the Super Scroll and Doctor Doom and Loki, especially. Here's like some more famous battles in this series. They call them arch enemies. So it's got like your Silver Surfer versus Mephisto, 
and Fantastic Four versus Doom and Galactus. Some more Hulk versus thing and the scrolls. Just really cool cards. This really, this card series, some of these cards really introduced me to some new characters like Captain Marvel. You know, by the time I was collecting comic books, Captain Marvel was already long dead in the Marvel Universe. So I really didn't even know about him. But once I read this, once I got this card and I read about him and Quasar and the, the Nega Bands or Mega Bands, whatever, or it like, I, I, again, a whole new addiction, a whole other character or two to fall in love with and start collecting, you know, their comics and their back issues. I'm a little bit of a completist, so I like to, once I get into a character, I try to com collect as much of their comics as possible, as far back as possible. Infinity Gauntlet, I couldn't wait to get this card and see what it said in the back. I didn't even know what the ultimate Nuffler was until I got this card. I loved reading about how powerful Thor's hammer was. And that's done for the 1991 Marvel Universe Series 2. This is Series 3. Again, I love the artwork. Artwork is great. It's classic. It's cool. You know, the artwork from the early 90s to late 90s, that's my favorite era of comic books, you know, and um, some of my favorite artwork of all time. And I love this generation of of artwork, this era of artwork. I, I think it's, it's just classic superhero artwork and I wish they still used like more of this type of artwork. And again, I'll show you guys back here. Has some sort of, you know, power ratings with a little, you know, information about each superhero. And by series three, they got rid of the did you know facts, I believe. Nope, they still had them, but they didn't title them, did you know facts? But um, on these cards in the back, it covered strength, intelligence, mental powers, energy projection, fighting ability, speed. So again, it was so fun collecting these cards because you can go out there with your friends and, and compare your favorite superhero of all time to their favorite superhero and really see who was the stronger of the two. You could bust out your Marvel 1 yeah, you know, um, Marvel Series One cards, and see who had the better fighting percentage and who won most of their battles. So it really led you to believe, you know, that you were able to like check all their stats and, and figure out who was the best and most powerful superhero in the Marvel universe. And gave you that like feeling. And I love these cards because they introduced again a lot more new characters, like really rare, obscure characters that at the time in the '90s weren't really popular at that time. So it was amazing to see Terrax in card form or Magus or, or Thanos or, you know, even Mephisto was not always like, you know, too too popular in the 90s. He's more popular nowadays than he was back then. The Collector, Galactus, the Watcher, no one knew about the Collector and Eternity and Ego back then or cared about them or the Celestials. You know, or, or Stranger, or Living Tribunal. For the longest, I thought I was the only fan of these characters in that whole cosmic universe. The In-Betweener. And then some of these cards, this card came with um my Marvel Legends. I think it was Toy Biz, Daredevil figure. This came with, with um, it was this Tupac figure. Not Tupac. But um, this pack that came with two figures, it was Adam Warlock and Thanos. And um, they gave this Infinity Gauntlet card that I just fell in love with. And then these two cards I got at my local comic book store as a kid. When the Infinity Gauntlet, Infinity War, Infinity Crusade saga was happening. I don't think these cards were meant to be sold. I believe they were just given to the comic book stores for free. And then the comic book stores would just kind of give them out to like random people. And I'm just lucky that the comic book store owner, you know, kept me in mind and gave me one of each whenever they came out. He didn't have many of them, I remember. He had like a small stack. This is a promo card to Blood and Thunder. It was like a little, it was a really good storyline. I believe in the Silver Surfer comics. And it has like a little checklist behind it, I believe. Yep. It told you what comics to collect to 
get the whole series to co complete the whole story. But yeah, series three. Still looking pretty good and pretty cool. Some famous battles over here. They call it wars in this one. Again, a little story about each famous battle and each nemesis. And that's the end of series three. This is series four. And this is when things got really cool again. Because in series four, they started doing this new thing where when you filled up the page, it formed a really, really cool little like mini poster or, or picture. And it also had new char new obscure characters that weren't like the most popular or most well-known character in the Marvel Universe, but they were to me. They were characters that I knew of and loved, like Morg and Drax the Destroyer and the Goddess. And back in the 90s, not too many people cared for Quasar or Adam Warlock. Thanos barely got some love back then. But I loved the picture that it formed once you collected the whole page. And again, some great classic 90s artwork. Look how awesome that Silver Surfer is looking. I mean, that is really nice. I love the artwork on, so far, all of these cards. Each series just has some, some cards that really had some beautiful artwork and really stood out. And I can't wait to go upstairs and make sure I had the complete run of series one, two, and three. And if I don't, I can't wait to start really getting my hands on these cards and start collecting them again. Because I'm going to complete every run that I want of those Marvel cards. And I can't wait to get a lot of these cards CGC graded. I don't know if it's going to bring up the value of these cards by much or a lot or how much they're going to be worth once you get them CGC graded. But I'm going to love having each individual card encapsulated. And in that beautiful, glossy, shiny case that they got in with the grade above it. And I really can't wait to get some of these, you know, some of my favorite cards graded and encapsulated. Legacy, son of Captain Marvel. I really like that um, character as much as I like Beta Ray Bill. And here's a cool Wolverine card. I think this came with... An X-Men figure. Not really big into the X-Men, so I really don't collect too much X-Men stuff. But I'm um, again here we go with the complete picture, the mini poster, whatever you want to call it. Once you fill the page up, you get that cool picture in it. And um, I really just love I, I I love this this series. I love this one. And it was something new. It really like um as Series 3, I felt like the card, the Marvel cards started falling a little bit flat or just getting a little bit bored when collecting them. Um, this series, Series 4, this one, really sparked new life into the whole Marvel card collecting again. Like, you know, I, I wanted to complete this collection and, and I, I'm pretty sure I did. I wanted to get all the posters that were they had for it. Again, I, I just love... The artwork and some of the stuff they put in the back is really cool. But um, by this series, I just noticed in the background, in the back of the cards, even though they do give you the power rating, there's no more like origin story or little fun did you know fact. And I think by that time, they probably just thought like, hey, this is getting a little bit redundant. You know, we already put out three different card series that gave you origin stories that told you about the battle, the famous battle, and it told you what issue it took place. And so maybe by Series 4, they were like, hey, there's no reason to repeat the same information and just keep regurgitating the same info over and over. But um, here are the Titans. I didn't know who the Titans were back then. And so I got these darn cards and sparked the imagination. And I started like looking into them and collecting those comics and, and reading on them. But here's some more famous battles. Warlock versus Man Beast. Here's a Quicksilver card. Here's a new Fantastic Four versus Secret Defenders. Here's a Grey Hulk versus Green Hulk card. Surfer versus Morg. That was a great battle. The Face of Doom was up there. And I'm guessing that is the end of the Skybox Marvel Series 4, Marvel Universe Series 4. 
Skybox was who put them out in 1993. And here, now at this point, I really can't remember. I just knew that I was in love with these cards. They were bright. They were colorful. They were really thick cards. Kind of had this cardboard like thickness feel to them. The corners always stood sharp. They were putting like these really bright, popping, vibrant colors on them. And just the artwork was great. I was loving it. It was more of a new style of artwork. It wasn't your classic 90s artwork. It was more of a new age artwork. But I, I was falling in love with it. And I was definitely digging it. And I was happy and really excited to see these cards when they were released. Let's start off with this Silver Surfer card over here. I don't know if you can see on camera. But it's like a see-through trans transparent card. So there's the artwork, but it's on some sort of like plastic translucent card. Like it's made of plastic. It's really cool. It's almost looks like it's, it's made on glass. And here's like another cool Silver Surfer card and an, another cool legacy and Adam Warlock and Terax and Tyron and Thanos. Just a bunch of cool cards. I was really in love with these cards when I first seen them. But they were super cool. And on the back, they brought back, you know, like an origin story or a little did you know. And some facts and stats on the superheroes and like their height and their weight and stuff like that. And then more power ratings. Can't forget the power ratings. You cannot leave that out. But I also love, you know, like the origin story. Look at that legacy origin story up here. Really opens you up, you know, really introduces you to the character. And the next thing you know, you read that little origin story in the back of the card. And next thing you know, you're addicted to the character. And you're collecting everything you could find with Legacy in it. Here's some more cards. Fantastic Four. People that usually show up in the Fantastic Four series. Thor. Hulk. Ooh, another beautiful um, poster, you know mini picture type of card collection. I, I just love this. You know, I loved when I finally got the card, the the page, you know, all the the sleeves, all the little s slots filled. I just loved it when I was able to finally get the whole picture put together. Sometimes I was like, man, maybe I should like tape the back of these cards, tape them together, make mini like posters and hang them up in my room. But I couldn't bring myself to do that you know, tape all the cards up together and kind of like damage them or, you know, bring down the value of them or just completely destroy them. I mean, it would completely de destroy the value of them. It'd have zero value once you do that. So I couldn't bring myself. But now that I realize how many doubles and quadruples I have, I'm, I might do that. Maybe I'll make like a, put them in a nice frame, make like a nice little mini picture Hang it up like a poster or something. But here's this cool one. I wanted to mention this character. I don't think many people know him or even remember him. But he was a huge part of like the whole Infinity Gauntlet, Infinity War, Infinity Crusade saga. His name was Maximum. And I thought he was a really cool character. Um, they, at the end of his story, they blasted him off into like another multiverse or another universe or dimension and... He's been gone ever since, but he was a really cool character. I want to say his strength level was on the same level as Strong Guy from, you know, the X-Men universe or as strong as Colossus or The Thing. He's not as strong as like the Incredible Hulk, but he can give him like a good run for his money, a good fight. He has classic Drax the Destroyer. This is the Drax the Destroyer that we all know and love and that we grew up on. And... When I got back into comics and I was like, you know, looking for a comic with Drax the Destroyer and I saw what the new Drax the Destroyer looked like, I couldn't believe my eyes. I didn't even want to accept it or like believe that that was the new Drax the Destroyer, this tatted up, you know, alien. But um, he grew on me eventually, but I still love the classic Drax the Destroyer way more. I mean, he was like a really fun, cool character and. Really um, complex character. I really liked um, reading his older stuff and following that character. Oh man, here's a. These are these the same cards? No, these are Marvel masterpiece, and I really love these cards. I have a lot of fondness for these cards. Here's 
Here's this Silver Surfer versus Thanos, kind of like a metal card. It's like a 3D metal type of card, like there's some, definitely some shine, some chrome on it. It's, it's really nice. Silver Surfer is all chromed out and the blast is all chromed out. I really like that. I think I paid like 20 bucks for this card back in the 90s. So I found out that later on I was more than willing to pay 20 bucks for one individual card instead of like buying package after package hoping I would land that one card. Because it just would lead to too many doubles and triples and quadruples. Mo Man, he's eventually going to pop into the MCU. That's the perfect Submariner. That's how I always envision him. I don't like that Quasar too much. That Surfer, that was the first time that they really made the Silver Surfer like look alien-like. And I think this has got to be like another, like maybe Marvel Masterpiece Series 2, from what I remember, from what I recollect. That Thor looks amazing. I always thought that Thor card looked great. I can't wait to get some of these cards graded. That's a nice Thanos. Ooh, that's one of my favorite Adam Warlock, Warlock cards of all time. Look how realistic that Trax the Destroyer looks. Look how badass he looks flying in outer space like that. He's a dope Terrax. I got some Punisher 2099, some Venom, some Rhino. I'm surprised I even have these cards in here because none of these three are like some of my favorite characters of all time. Yeah, I'm really surprised I have some of these in here. I think at one point I just maybe just started filling up the pages. Not enough cosmic beans and superheroes to fill up this binder. But here's a good Thor. Oh, I love that Galactus. That's dope. That legacy is nice. Oh, I couldn't believe my eyes when I finally seen Jack of Hearts getting some love, some recognition, and they put him in card form. I really loved seeing the obscure characters pop up in these card um, series. You know, if it was series one, two, or three, or Marvel Masterpiece, I loved seeing when a superhero first po popped up in card form. It was Almost like the same rush that I would get, like finding a Patrick Ewan rookie card or something like that. Or, you know, some kind of Daryl Strawberry rookie card or something. Yeah. I got just as much excitement and love as collecting, you know, basketball cards. And some more, you know, Odin. Really love that picture of Odin, Nebula. Look how beefy Terrax is looking over here, Trax. Oh, that's a dope Quasar. Some Tyrant. Some Adam. Yeah, a lot of these are the same characters over and over. Just, you know, different series. Different runs. Oh, that's a great Thor. I'm not sure. This is definitely not Marvel Masterpiece anymore. These are... I don't know what these are. These are not Marvel Masterpiece Series 1 or 2. 94 Flare. Yeah, that's what they are. 94 Flare. That's what I'm going to call them for now because I cannot remember the name to this series, what they were calling it by this by this year, by this point. But I love that Adam Warlock. They, they used that same pose for Adam Warlock Issue 1. Um, I think it was called like Adam Warlock Chronicles. Oh, I got a Deadpool. Oh, I love this card. This is one of my favorite cards. If I ever find that as a poster, uh-uh. They should turn that into some kind of variant cover nowadays. But if I ever find that as a poster, I'm going to buy it. I love that cover or that card. It's got Silver Surfer fighting Thor in the back. It's a classic battle. I always think um, the Surfer would win that battle. His Surfer and Legacy... And in the back of these cards, it's just like a little origin story or a little 
biography about the character. It's a Galactus. And the artwork on this one is pretty good. It's a nice Thor. I think by that time I was maybe not into collecting cards as I was like, you know, the prior years. But I'm um, definitely the Marvel Metal cards did for me what like series four did it got me back into it because these were some beautiful gorgeous cards it was the character and then in the background it was all chromed out and you know you know how us comic book fans are for shiny covers or anything shiny with our favorite character on it but the artwork was pretty good really had this 3d feel I like them, but I, I wasn't in love with them as much as like, you know, series one, two, and three. And again, in the back of the card, they gave you like a little origin story or a little bit information about the character plus their power rating. So it was trying to, you know, bring that back. But most of these cards are, are pretty dope. Kind of, yeah, here's the trial of Reed Richards. Really liking and digging these cards. Oh, here's a nice one. I think that was from... um. I think it was what if like issue 49 what if the silver surfer got the infinity gauntlet it's probably what it, it talks about behind this card you know actually these cards are pretty pretty darn nice pretty cool i think i'll try to like complete this series get the whole run this has got to be a different different series maybe it's series two to the metal cards what year did this come out these came out in 1995. Nope, maybe it's the same series, the same run of cards. But they're pretty cool looking, pretty different. I like all that chrome in the back. Okay, that's the end of that series. And I'm not quite sure if the, that was the same series of this, because the back of the cards were like, almost looks like for. It was maybe some sort of like role playing game, and maybe you needed some of these cards. I'm not really too sure what these cards were or what they were about, but they look pretty cool. And if I can find them for a good, cheap, you know, decent price, I'll collect, you know, I'll collect them and complete the run, the series. I want to address this card. This is one of my favorite cards of all time. It's a really hard obscure card to find i've never seen it on ebay but i haven't looked i haven't checked in a while but it's another card that when i seen it i knew it was something rare and obscure and i knew i had to have it and i knew i wanted it for my collection and i knew if i left that comic book store i was never gonna see it again and it's another card that i think i paid just like 20 bucks for and it was the promo card for the silver surfer series it was called like silver surfer prism and all the cards had a prism look to it this 3d chrome shiny type of card it was like a combination of the metal cards and like a hologram card and they were really really nice they were all like i never seen anything like it ever again like they never made cards like that ever again and they were super cool and they did not look like this promo card this promo card is probably cooler than the whole series the whole collection it's probably like the coolest card out of the set. And like as you can. I don't know if I can get this on camera. But as you move the card. It like kind of reflects. You know that metal. Chrome shininess. I don't know if you can see the, the reflection on the camera. But that was a great find that card. And then here's something called. Overpower game card. These for sure were a part of like. Some sort of role playing game. And. These are just some random cards. I can't even tell you. These cards up here are called Marvel Legends. I don't know what series or what run that is. But I have very few of these cards. And then some of these Overpower cards. I have very few of these too. The artwork is just kind of okay. A little generic on them. Again, I would probably complete every series, every Every one of, of cards in, in this collection, you know, series one, two, three, four, five. I, I would probably want to complete like the Marvel Masterpiece one and two. I think there was maybe three runs of them. And because I'm really, that this CGC announcement that they're going to be grading cards really just like opened my eyes and it, it, it really 
sparked my like memory and took me down you know memory lane and that whole feeling of nostalgia just rushed back into my head and I just remembered how much I loved collecting these cards, how much I loved hunting them down, how much I loved a lot of each individual cards and the beauty of them and the art, the beautiful artwork that was on these. So I was really surprised, especially with like Marvel Masterpiece 1 and 2, to see how much beautiful artwork could be displayed on this little tiny card, how much beautiful artwork was dedicated to, you know, especially those two um that Marvel Masterpiece um, series, you know, how much beautiful artwork was dedicated to those cards. And right here, and this is why I dug out this one in particular book. This is the one that I'm the, the series that I'm the most excited about, the most excited to show on camera. And that was, let me see what year this, this came out. The 1992 Silver Surfer Prism Cards. And I love these cards. I, I can't get enough of them. I absolutely love them. Um, they're really cool. Like I said, they're like a combination of a hologram and a metal card. These prisms kind of like reflect and shine as you move them. They make the artwork on the card look really cool and stand out. It gives you like a... Like, you know, a, a view, a vision of a card comic book cover. You know, it gives you like... You know, like a reimagination of that cover. Like, you, you'll, you've never seen the cover look like that before. And it just looks so cool and so popping and vibrant and really stands out. And it just really gives the whole card this prism effect. Like, a really cool look. And um, allows you to see something like the Silver Surfer issue one in a whole new light. Well, like, look at that cool picture. You know, so really cool stuff. Yeah, some really dope stuff. Fire Lord. I remember when I found this card, I'm like, oh my God, there's a Fire Lord card. And really surprised that he even made it into the series. Without this series, I probably wouldn't even know about the Inhumans or Celestia or, or the Stranger. You know, when I first saw this card, I was like, who is this guy? I was real happy to see Jack of Hearts. You know, Eternity. I, I didn't even know that there was a human form. Of eternity, and so I've seen that card. Or, oh no, actually, my bad. That's hold on. Oh man, I love these cards just like so much. I was so happy to see Jack of Hearts, you know, make it in here and this classic cover to Silver Surfer issue four reimagined with the prisms. Look how cool that looks as it reflects. You know, it introduced me to so many new characters. I was like, who is this guy? The living tribunal on the in-betweener. And you got an eternity and infinity over here. Just some really, really cool stuff. You know, just gorgeous cards. You know, look at this cover to... This card is the cover to Silver Surfer issue 50. I think it was like volume 3. You know, this card here is the first appearance of the Infinity Gauntlet. You know, look at these three pictures right here, just completely reimagined with these prisms and that cool, like, holographic or 3D effect. Really great artwork on these cards. You know, when Adam Warlock and Pip the Troll go to Doctor Strange's house to warn them about Thanos coming in the start of the whole Infinity Gauntlet saga... It wasn't the Hulk who crash landed through that window. It was Adam Warlock and Pip the Troll and Silver Surfer coming to warn the Earth. Again, look at that. That's the cover to um, Adam Warlock and the Infinity Walk. How great and cool it looks now. Even cooler than it does on the comic. Forgot his name, but um, Thanos got the power gem from him. I think he's called like the Champion. They, they should have had stuff like that in the movie. It, it really killed the movie for me that stuff like that was left out. Or they didn't show how Thanos acquired the Infinity Gems. Or, you know, they didn't have Adam Warlock and Silver Surfer in it. And those are like the main people in that storyline. As much as I love the Avengers, you know, it wasn't them. I mean, they did play a major part in role, but, you know, it should have had people like Silver Surfer, Adam Warlock in there. 
And here's the checklist. I think there was 72 cards in that series. Yep, 72. And every card looked like a special card. Every card had great artwork. Every card had that hologram feel. That to me was like the plateau, the peak of comic book card collecting. Like after this series, no, I, I think I kept collecting comic book cards. And so like maybe the early 2000s, I, I forgot what series or run that I ended it with. But to me, this was the pinnacle. This was, you know, the plateau, the peak for me. Once um this, I was done completing this series and I got like two or three complete runs of this um series. Once it was done, I never felt the same way about any other card series that came out. It didn't quite give me that same feel. This card series really spoiled you. Like I said, everything looked like a hologram and, you know, super cool. And I'm just going to flip through them back one more time super fast. It's a great card, too. Just one last look. Love this card of the Inhumans. Overpower card game. I guess these were for the some sort of role playing card game. She Hulk. Again, I love that show. It's a good, fun show. Not every Marvel show has to be so serious. Here's that promo card for the Silver Surfer Prism cards. That's what they call them. Silver Surfer All Prism Trading Cards by Comic Images. That's a great find, that promo card. So glad I have that in my collection. Here's those cool medals that I want to complete now. Really like the artwork on them. Pretty cool. Like the, that foil look. And here's those Marvel Flare. I think they were, yep. Flare 95. So I was still collecting all the way until 95, collecting Marvel cards. Is that cool Deadpool, that cool Infinity Crusade? Yeah, I mean, they took images, pictures right out of these card collections and, and turned them straight into like comic book covers. That's the covers of Adam Warlock. Chronicles issue one, and I love that pose. I mean, the artwork from these cards, like, still hold the test of time. Like, definitely compete with a lot of the comic books out nowadays that have some crappy artwork in them. Meanwhile, look at the effort they used to put into the artwork just for these cards. Remember, I just remember just recently they put out these homage covers using these images from Marvel Masterpiece Series 1. $20 card. I love that image of the Hulk. Just recently they had that as a homage cover. I forgot which comic it was, but it was definitely that image and it was definitely a homage cover to Marvel Masterpiece. Again, I love... These mini posters, these little pictures that you can form and put together. Love that see-through transparent card. It's like a plastic card. And again, just one last look. Just in case you missed anything. Oh, I got a whole bunch of checklists over here that I can use as a guide for things. To a checklist. And we're coming to the getting to back to the beginning of the collection. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy this video and you want to see more comic book content, I got a ton of comic book videos coming out soon. So please click like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. And hit that notification button so you can be notified and stay notified because I'm going to keep on putting new comic book content out on a daily. Here goes that $20 
Silver Surfer hologram card that I bought when I was like 13. My mom could not believe I was spending so much on that card.